China has sent a warning of sorts, almost a threatening warning to the United States when it comes to making batteries in the US. Basically, they don't want them to do it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Make sure you check out some of the 2000 videos we've made over the last, what, just over a year and a half since we started this channel. It's been amazing. There's so much going on in the industry. It's been an insane, insane last 12 months. Things have changed massively. One thing that's changed, big change. The US is now looking at manufacturing batteries, mining batteries, refining battery materials. Tesla's going to do that in Texas so that they can have the whole supply chain in the United States. Now, when I started this channel, I warned people many times that it was becoming a, an increasing threat to national security, to the, the balance of power in the world, that the majority of battery, battery manufacturing was in, in China. In fact, not the majority, the vast majority, and that that wasn't going to change anytime soon. Well, fortunately, the United States has taken some serious steps to try and reverse this, to try and gain back some of that power. Now, can that happen? Will it work? Who knows? I mean, we don't really know, considering the Chinese economy now, the Chinese battery companies have a pretty big advantage now. They're set up this. They get massive subsidies. They can manufacture batteries at incredibly low prices. But there are some incredibly promising battery companies in the United States, especially one working on lithium ion phosphate batteries right now, ramping their production up. I made a video about that company. I'll put a link in the description below. Their new lithium ion phosphate batteries have the highest energy density and they will last for 2 million kilometers without seeing any significant battery degradation. Incredible technology, absolutely mind-blowing stuff. You need to see that video if you haven't seen it. Chinese ambassador Qin Gang had a message for the US about its plan to establish a domestic EV supply chain. He said, don't. Okay, so the Chinese envoy's message was more diplomatic and more detailed than that, but it was a warning to the US against cutting China out of its EV supply chain. China definitely does feel threatened by the new Inflation Reduction Act. Or Anyway, the US's goals to increase their own battery production and to decrease their current dependence on China, which, like I've said, is certainly an alarming situation to be in. So why is China so concerned? Well, if the US goes ahead with its plan, it will end up hurting both countries' interests, says China. China claims these interests are intertwined and upsetting the established order of the global supply chain will damage both the US and China's interests. China's saying, well, we're going to take over the automotive industry globally. And if you get in the way of that, then um, that won't work out well for you. That's essentially what they're saying, uh, to be honest. I'm a little bit shocked that uh, they would talk this way. To me, it seems ridiculous and hypocritical, to be honest. Frankly, just bizarrely hypocritical that they would try and stop the US from manufacturing their own batteries. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to make of this. It just seems insane. Now, during an interview at this year's Detroit Auto Show, otherwise known as the North American International Auto Show, the ambassador said this, to decouple with China means to disconnect from the world's largest market, as well as the biggest opportunity. The industry chain has been relatively well established over past years, and there would be no winner if anybody wanted to intervene or even destroy that. He went on to say, the electric vehicle value chain, or specifically the supply chain, is very globalized. Yeah, no, it's not. It's pretty much concentrated in China right now. And they're afraid that they're going to lose some of that if the US goes ahead with their plans. And frankly, this kind of scarcity mindset just damages the person saying it or the country he's representing. This is not a good move from China, in my view. In my view, this is the kind of mindset that leads to what? It leads to protectionism. It leads to making decisions that, if anything, will hinder you in the future. Now, don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean China's going to act on what he's saying. But he does represent China, and I think he should be more careful with the way he actually speaks publicly about China's interests. I mean, realistically, China needs to accept the fact that other companies, other countries are going to try to make their own batteries. And they may, in some point in the future, try to not 
depend entirely upon China for their existence. That's a completely normal way to go about operating in business. So there it is. Usually, the word globalized is used in the context of corporations moving production to either East and South Asia or Latin America, says Gizmodo, in order to cut costs and make more money. Well, now globalization is being invoked as a term to kind of throw around by Chinese diplomats. Ambassador Chin Gang isn't wrong to say the EV supply chain, among others, is globalized. But no one is arguing that point. If anything, the US agrees with that. That's because that's the basis of the Inflation Reduction Act. As it applies to EVs, electric cars from American companies depend on globalized supply and production. And the US wants that to become localized supply and production. I mean, the truth is the US are actually partnering with a lot of companies that are not really US owned. I mean, think about this, right? Who are Ford's battery partners that they've gone into a 50-50 joint venture within the US to make batteries, right? SK Innovation. They're not American. Who Who is making batteries with General Motors, right? Well, it's LG Chem, South Korea. Now, who is GM's biggest electric vehicle parts supplier? By far their biggest supplier in the US. It is Hyundai. Hyundai provides them with all these different parts. So the truth is America is very well used to cooperating with other countries. The ambassador actually used General Motors as an example, saying GM's latest models are designed, developed, and produced to be sold in China. The GM SAIC Wuling joint venture is indeed doing pretty well thanks to the Wuling Mini EV. Ostensibly, Chinese and other foreign EV makers will be put off by strict domestic rules and overlook the American market. But China's car makers already do this. Bloomberg reports there wasn't a single Chinese company at the Detroit Auto Show. Now compare that to the upcoming Paris Motor Show, which Chinese car makers BYD and Great Wall Motors plan to attend. And it looks like China isn't really interested in selling its EVs in the US. It's mostly interested in keeping a lucrative role supplying the majority of EVs sold in the US or anywhere else. What does that mean? Well, obviously Europe is a much easier, lower hanging fruit than the United States market. For one, the US has a tariff of 25% on all vehicles sold in the US. If they're made in China, you gotta pay 25%. Now, to be fair, the China does the same thing to the US made cars. So this is not me pointing out the US is doing something to China. They're both doing it to each other. What I want to know, though, is what do you think about all this? What do you make of the Chinese ambassador doing this? Does this sound like a threat to you? Does this sound like China is concerned of losing their battery market, their hold, their global hold on the electric vehicle supply market? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Have a great day. Bye-bye.